today. Andy's Next Gen motherboards are not cheap. Andy's 96 core monster crushes Intel. Intel's entire 13th gen lineup is here and you're going to need a new PSU and cooler for this. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, some of the first motherboards for AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs have become available for pre-order early, and the pricing will make you cry. The boards were originally found by Momomo underscore US, and as you can see, it includes a total of 9 boards from ASUS. The Crosshair X670E boards, their Strix boards, Prime, and more. Now the big news here is actually the pricing. I would say this is some preliminary pricing, but there's similar prices at other retailers for different boards. Before I go over it, because this is in Germany, keep in mind that these include a 19% VAT, plus prices don't always translate perfectly to US dollars, so they could be a bit cheaper, but still not great. Starting things off, we have the most expensive Crosshair X670E Extreme, which is going for a whopping 1500 bucks. Sure, taking off 19% helps, but that's still a lot. Moving down, we have the Strix E Gaming Wi Fi, which is $927, then moving all the way down to the Prime X670P, not the X670E, but P, we're looking at $491. All in all, AMD's next gen platform may be quite a bit more expensive than last gen. Of course, you can always argue that AM5 will last far longer than Intel's, but the initial price difference may not be that great. Next up, I have three words. Melee Battle Royale. Now that I've got your attention, I'm really pumped to tell you about this video's sponsor, Naraka Blade Point because they're celebrating their one year anniversary by having a free weekend on Steam and Epic. Plus they're giving you 50% off the game after. If you haven't heard, Naraka is a hero based battle royale game that actually uses fast paced melee combat along with some incredible mobility. So definitely something different. There are 12 unique customizable characters, each with their own skills. Tons of melee weapons to find, plus guess what? There's a grappling hook. That's right, forget about obstacles in your path because the grappling hook adds mobility like no other battle royale. Oh, and they're adding a new map called Halderoth. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to join the celebration for free only between the 18th and 22nd. And if you reply to my pinned comment with happy birthday to Naraka Blade Point and say what you like about the game, the most liked comment will win a $50 Amazon e-card. Next up, AMD's next-gen 96-core monster of a CPU was just pitted against Intel's next-gen Sapphire Rapid CPU. This story comes from Twitter user Yuki Ans and later reported by Tom's Hardware. What's amazing is that the user got a chance to test a 2-processor 96-core Genoa as well as a 2P 56-core Sapphire Rapids 8480+. Plus. Now, obviously AMD's Genoa has way more cores than Intel's Sapphire Rapids, but these are likely set to be their top top in next gen CPUs. Plus, in the Cinebench benchmark, while it should be 192 cores and 384 threads, Cinebench seems to only support up to 128 cores and 256 threads. So AMD's part was very much held back. Plus, these are likely engineering samples, so we'll have to see in the end. With all of that out of the way, how well did they perform? Well, AMD's monster CPUs got a score of 110,230, while Intel Sapphire Rapid scored 69 1777. That means AMD's next gen Genoa beat Intel's part by a whopping 58% and that's with it being effectively crippled by Cinebench. It ended up being 128 cores versus 112. Not a huge difference given AMD's Genoa CPUs actually had 192 cores. Imagine a benchmark that actually uses all of them. As usual, there are certain benchmarks that work better on Intel versus AMD, etc. But this is certainly not looking good for Intel, especially given AMD's Genoa is rumored to launch in like a month, while Sapphire Rapids looks to be delayed yet again. Next up, Intel's entire 13th gen CPU lineup just leaked. In a new post by Extreme Player and later reported by Video Cards, we now have everything. So let's get right to it. 
Starting things off, we have the 13900 and 900F. Both of these are 65 watt CPUs with 24 cores, with 8 performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. It also has 36 megabytes of cache, and of course, while this claims a TDP of 65 watts, when you look at the base clock, you can see it's a measly 2 gigahertz. I'm assuming this is the base frequency of the performance core, and if so, this is simply more tricks to keep that base TDP at the same level. They do this all the time. Lower the base frequency so you can claim it's the same TDP as last gen. But as we'll see in the next story, that's definitely not the case. Moving on, we have the 13900K and KF. These are also 24 core CPUs, but with a TDP of 125 watts. And you can see their base frequency is 3 gigahertz. All of the non-F parts also have iGPUs with 32 execution units, except for the two low-end parts, which have 24. Moving on, we have the i7 13 13700 and 700F. These have 16 cores with 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. They have 30 megabytes of cache, a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz, and a TDP of 65 watts. Next is the 13700K and KF, which come with the same 16 cores and 30 megabytes of cache. But they have a base frequency of 3.4 gigahertz and a 125 watt TDP. Moving down to the i5, we have the 13600K and KF, which come with 14 cores, 6 performance performance cores and 8 efficiency cores, 24 megabytes of cache with a 125 watt TDP and base frequency of 3.5 gigahertz. Next we have the 13600 part which gets the same 14 cores but a TDP of 65 watts and a base clock of 2.7 gigahertz. Next we have the 13500 which also has 14 cores and a 65 watt TDP but with a base frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. Then there's the 13400 which is a 10 core CPU with 6 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. It has a 65 watt TDP with a base frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. Finally is the 13100 which is a 4 core CPU with all being performance cores. This part has a 60 watt TDP with a base frequency of 3.4 gigahertz. At the end of the day, when it comes to Intel versus AMD, I think it'll likely boil down to price. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly, while on the topic of Intel's 13th gen, a new setting means you likely need a new cooler and PSU. The story comes from a new report by the Hungarian site Pro Hardware, where they claim that Intel's i9 lineup will support a shockingly high power limit, 350 watts. That's right, the new power limit will uncap the PL2 limit for some potentially big performance gains. This seems to prove my earlier expectations with the claim that most of Intel's performance gains would come come from more cores and higher clocks. This told me power draw would go through the roof, and here we are. The feature apparently requires their new 700 series motherboards because last gen isn't meant to get that high. Basically, there's going to be an option to enable 350 watt mode, though it will require a quote, serious cooling system. According to the report, the feature adds a performance increase of 15%, so it's not huge, but if you're wanting to get the most out of your next-gen CPU, that would be the way to do it. At the end of the day, while Intel's next-gen is set to be extremely powerful, you're gonna likely need an amazing cooler and PSU. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Intel's next gen or are you a bit worried about that 350 watts? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.